In lecture 2 of INF 154, we wrote a dollar, pound, euro uh, currency converter and the program looked like this. So we had a click event, a click event handler for each one of the radio buttons. So the rad US dollar, pound and euro. So if you look at the code in for example the US dollar event handler, see we have the US exchange right there. We declare a rand value and a dollar value and an output stream. Then we get the rand value from the text box and we calculate the dollar value by multiplying the rand value with the exchange rate. Then we build up the output string to say the rand value is worth so many dollars and we display it in a message box. So if you look at the other two event handlers, you see there's a lot of similarity. The only thing that changes is the exchange rate and then we have where we had a dollar value variable there, here we have a pound variable, a pound value variable. So other than the pound value variable and the pound exchange rate, um, there is very little difference. The only other difference is that we have in our output stream, we also list the currency. So there are three things that change from the one currency to the next in the three event handlers. But other than that, they are pretty much the same. So if we have a situation like this, um, it's a good indication that we could use a method um, and then call the method from each of the event handlers and this would reduce the, num the amount of code in each event handler. Okay, so we have our three event handlers. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a method called currency converter. It's a public method. The method is going to return the output string that we want to display in the message box. So I'm going to make it a string method. And I'm going to call it currency converter. Now the parameters that it receives are those three things that differ between the three event handlers. So firstly, the rand value. So that would be a double and I'm just going to call it RANDs. And the next thing is the exchange rate. So I just give it a generic name, exchange rate, because we want to send either the pound exchange rate, the dollar exchange rate, or the euro exchange rate, depending on which um, event under we're calling the method from. And this will also be a double variable. And the last thing is the currency as a string. So I have a string currency. Okay, then inside the method, we're going to do basically what we do in each of the event handlers. Okay, I'm, let me just first copy the whole thing over. Then we'll get rid of the unnecessary code. Okay. So I'm not going to declare the euro exchange rate here because we've declared a parameter for that. So I can delete that. We already have the rand value um, as rands in that parameter, but we, oops, but we are going to calculate the foreign currency here, but it's going to be either euro, dollar, or pound. So I'm just going to give it the generic name again and say foreign value. All right, so we need that. And then we need the output string as well, because that is what we're going to return. Okay, so what I can put in so long is the return statement that says return output string. Okay, 
and now we must just figure out what we're going to do here. So this we've already done. So we received the rand value by our parameter, so we don't need that. We're only going to calculate the euro value and not the euro value, the foreign value. And here we're just going to say rands. And here we're going to make it the generic exchange rate. Okay, so now we're going to build the output string. So we're going to say the rand value that's in the text box is worth and the foreign value that we've calculated. And over here, instead of putting that string, I'm going to take that currency string over there and put it in here. Okay, that is not between quotes because we're using the variable. That variable will contain the string currency. So you can see the method looks very much like all of the event handlers. Um, so all that repetition of code we're now going to get rid of. So in, for example, the RAD Euro exchange rate method, we um, are going to delete that exchange rate. I just, or let me just keep it, otherwise I'm going to forget what it is. So I'm going to have the double RAND value. I don't need this variable anymore, and I don't need that, and I don't need that. Okay, so somewhere here we now have to call the method that will give us the output stream. So, because we need the output string over here, we can replace this by the method call. So, instead of output string here, I'm just going to call the method here and say currency converter. And then the parameters that I need to send it are the rand value, the exchange rate, and the currency. Okay. So the rand value we've already calculated, rand value, and um, the exchange rate is 0 0.065, and the string version of the currency is euros. Okay, just need to add a bracket there. So I can now take out this line. not declaring a constant because I'm just sending the um, exchange rate over. Okay, so let's just go through everything that I've done now. I've created the currency converter method that does the work that was previously done inside the event handler. So it receives the rands as a double value, the exchange rate as a double, and then the currency in string format. Inside the event, inside the method, I then um, declare a variable called foreign value and one called output string. Foreign value is then calculated by calculating the rands with the exchange rate, and then the output string is built up as before. And we can remove this. We don't want the um, method to display the output string, we just want the method to return it. So this output string is going to return, be returned to the calling statement and there it's going to be shown. Okay. So when the user clicks on the RAD Euro button, um, the RAND value is taken from the text box, converted to a double and stored in RAND value. Next, the method is called and it is sent the RAND value, the exchange rate, and the string. The 
euro value is calculated, the output string is built up, that output string is sent back here and it is shown in the message box. We can now go and change the other two event handlers in exactly the same way. So over here we just, um, it's actually going to be easier just to copy and paste this over. Just going to copy and paste it to there. And then over here I'm going to put the pound exchange rate in here. That's 5.8. And over here I'm going to say pounds. Right. And then I'm just going to delete everything I had. Okay, so we're now in the pound event handler. It gets the RAND value from the text box. It calls the currency converter, sends it the RAND value, the correct exchange rate, and the correct currency string. Okay, and the same we're going to do for the dollar one. So that is 0 0.77. I must just remember that. So 0. 77 and here I say dollars okay. and that is it. Just want to check that output string. Okay, what have I done incorrectly? There's a semicolon expected. Okay, I must delete that bracket. I don't know why I put it in there in the first place. Right. So now I put in a value of 200 rands. If I click on US dollar, it says it's worth... Okay, I can just go put a space in there to make it more neat. Okay, if I click on pounds and euros. Okay. So I just want to go and put a space before the currency just to make the output stream look, look better. Right. Okay, so this is basically it. So we've taken um, the program that we had where we did all the work in each event handler. We've moved the code that repeats into a method and now we are just calling the method from each one of the event handlers and sending it the correct um, exchange rate and the correct currency, currency that it will use to calculate the, um, to build up the output stream. As a last step, I just want to show you how one can change these event handlers further um, so that it has only one statement in, a calling statement to the method, um, just to give you an idea how one can define the parameters depending on how you decide to solve the problem. So we could, instead of sending over the double var um, value of the RAND value, we could send over the text or the string value and just then get rid of all of this. Okay, so this now means we have to go and change. Okay, I'm going to do this in each one of the event handlers. So now each event handler only has a message box.show statement in which it calls the currency converter that will send back the string with the correct output. Okay, but remember now we're sending it a, a string value now. So now the first parameter here should be a string and not a double. This then also means that over here we will need to convert 
that string rand value to double. And the rest remains exactly the same. Okay, so one should think carefully about how you design your parameters so as to make your code the most efficient.